today on At The Cottage with Chef D, we're all about breakfast. How about Eggs Benedict with an amazing hollandaise sauce? How about homemade cinnamon buns? And then we'll have some home fries. And that Italian omelet slash quiche without a crust frittata. Won't you join me on At The Cottage with Chef D? It's breakfast time. I invited my friend Chef Steve back to the cottage. We're going to do a whole bunch of different dishes with, uh, it's all breakfast. It's all breakfast all the time, isn't it? And There's nothing nicer than a good breakfast at the cottage. Exactly. And you might have indulged in a nice bottle of wine or two the night before, mm -hmm. so you want to have something that, you know, kind of helps you out to get you kick-started, as <laughs> yeah, it were, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, Right? So you're going to be making a frittata. Yes. I'm going to teach you how to make a really simple and easy cinnamon bun. So I'm going to get started on that. So right. I have four cups of flour. Did I ever tell you a story about how I got no. baking bread? <laughs> <laughs> no, you haven't. I was uh, four years, sorry, four years old. I was four years old. <laughs> That's was, pretty I was, good. I was 10 years old. Um, and I'm bored one summer day, just kind of like, you know, something like this. And so my mom had two cookbooks and her, her um, shelf was uh, Food That Really Schmecks by Irma Stabler mm -hmm. and Joy of Cooking, right? Because right. everybody had the Joy right. of Cooking. Yeah. So I took the Joy of Cooking out and looked at it and went through bread and I went, hmm, I can do this. Went to my local grocery store, picked up the ingredients and started making bread. Have a look back. And, and, and now here you are. Exactly. All right. So, so while you're doing that, okay. I'm going to mix the eggs. So I put in two tablespoons of sugar. I put in about a half a teaspoon of salt. And I have the fast act acting yeast, um, so this takes half the time. So there's about uh, two tablespoons in there. We're now we're just going to stir this together, just like so. Now, if you have a stand mixer and you want to do it in the stand mixer, you can. But I kind of like when you can actually get in and, and feel the dough with yeah. your hands, right? Mm -hmm. So then I'm going to add some clarified butter. So I have um, probably a quarter cup of clarified butter, and that goes. And then some warm water, and this is just tepid water, uh, so it's probably about 90 degrees. And we're going to stir that all in. Just like so. And you can start seeing it's just a nice... And you want the dough to be sticky. A lot of people tend to kind of go away from a sticky dough. They make it really too dry, mm -hmm. and then it makes the end product too dry. So we're just going to stir this together. Just like so. And then what we're going to do is we're going to now take it and then you don't even have to cover it because it's only going to let, let rise for about an hour and we're just going to take our spoon out like so. Put it behind. A nice warm spot in the kitchen is always really good. And with the magic of TV <laughs> and some timing, we have our dough that's already been done. So then what we're going to do here, this is where you can take the frustrations <laughs> out of the cottage. Just pound it down. And what you're doing is you're just taking all the air out of your dough. And then I'm just going to grab it like this. And then we're just going to give it a quick knead in our hands. We just have some flour, <laughs> put our flour, just kind of give our dough just a little bit, flour around, our rolling pin. Okay, so if you don't have, if you don't have a rolling pin, you can use an empty wine bottle, yep. right? They yep. come in really handy. <laughs> 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 so th the bottle that you used last night it can now Easy become your rolling exactly, pan. Exactly. So we're just going to put flour our rolling pin just a little bit. You would do this with the um, with the wine bottle, and I'm just going to reach around and roll it out. Flip it over. Oh yeah. 
And you just know, oh, like, right. it just, yeah, it's there's something mm -hmm. about it. Mm -hmm. uh, sorry, I'm gonna have to go over here. Again, you just want to stretch it out. Now, what I do is kind of like pizza dough, is just kind of move it with your hands like so, and you're just taking it from the inside out. Roll it around, and now it can be as thick as thin or thin as you like it. I like it a little bit thicker. We're going to take some of our clarified butter and grab a spoon, because not everybody has a pastry brush <laughs> at the cottage, so you can just use a tablespoon. We're going to grab some of our clarified butter, and if you don't have clarified butter, you can use some um, just regular butter and just spread it on. And again, just like so. All the way around. Then I have some cinnamon. Now, you could put some black currants in, you could put some raisins in. Um, we're just at a cottage that doesn't like raisins, so we're just going to go plain cinnamon bun. Which all that means is I forgot the raisins at home. <laughs> <laughs> and we're going to take our brown sugar. I remember as a kid mm -hmm. doing toast in the morning and putting butter on it. And while the butter was still melting, sprinkling the cinnamon on it and the sugar on it. It was like... It doesn't get much better oh, than that, does it? Was it was like heaven, yeah. And then what we're going to do is we're just going to take it and we're going to fold it in. So nice and gently, and as you do this, the dough is going to get a little bit longer, as you can see. I'm just going to move this yep. over, sorry, Steve. Nice and tight. You want it really nice and tight because then you're not going to get any air bubbles in it. And it will rise a bit more too, right? Exactly. Once you put it in mm -hmm. the oven. And just like so, and I have a baking yep. sheet there. Um, now, I've greased the baking sheet just a little bit. I know it's um, a non-stick, but I always like to extra, extra yeah. uh, grease it. And then we're just going to put it in like so. If you don't have a baking, like a muffin tin, you can use a regular uh, baking sheet and just put it on there and cut them in circles. Mm -hmm. And they work perfect for you. You could use a cake pan too. Yep. Mm -hmm. Cut them in, uh, in like a square 8x8 eight eight cake pan and put them in side by side so they puff up nice. And you kind of get that nice rip too mm -hmm. with the cake pan. And you can just see, I'm just going to show you right there. That's what you want it all nice together. Oh, they smell good already. <laughs> <laughs> now we're going to let them sit um, on the counter for about 10 minutes just for the dough to rest after what you've done to it. And there you have it. Simple, easy cinnamon buns. Like I said, we're going to take it and we're just going to put it behind us for right now. Um, you know, five to ten minutes, we'll put it in a 350 degree oven. It's going to take about 25 minutes to bake, gently nice and brown. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And if you want the secret to know how to test your bread being done, tap it on. And if it sounds hollow to you, you know it's done. Yeah, exactly. So Steve, you're going to show us how to make a frittata. Yes. Now, what is a frittata? <laughs> uh, <laughs> so basically, uh, it, Italian um, yep. uh, in origin, um, it is basically uh, an overly large omelet that's mm -hmm. not kind of flipped. Um, a crustless quiche, mm -hmm. you could call it. Um, a Western without the bread type right. idea. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Uh, so. In my pan, I have uh, some olive oil I like to use. Now, if you're using, I like to use the non-stick pans. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, I do with my students. It, it's easier for them to use um, than it is uh, like a stainless steel or anything like that because you really have to know how to work with those right. types of pans so the egg won't stick. And once egg sticks to something, yep. you forget it. Perfect. You gotta get somebody else to clean it up. Okay, <laughs> so in here, we have our vegetables. So just some onions, peppers, and we have some yellow, red, and green peppers. Yes. But you could put anything in, from chorizo to um, any, any, anything you yes, want. Yes, you could. Any of the leftovers. You know, if you want to put some cold beef in it, or even some ground beef in it, you can put that in. This yes. is what's so great about it. There's no real, real... No. No. No, no. No. So that... Now I am going to add some garlic. Okay. Because um, we have to add some garlic. Garlic goes in everything. Right, exactly. Goes in everything. Very healthy for you. 
Uh, now I added the vegetables first. Yeah. Always add the garlic second. Never add your garlic right away. The intense heat that? of the oil. Um, there's a likely, a good likelihood that you'll burn your uh, your garlic, and you don't want that. So adding in the vegetables ahead of time um, will help lower that <laughs> oil temperature, and then you can add your garlic after that. Because there's really nothing worse than having um, burnt garlic. <laughs> It's, it, yeah, it, right. it does uh, spoil the flavor of the dish. Um, and it, yeah, it just doesn't make it uh, very uh, appetizing for sure. Okay, so while you're doing that, I'm just gonna go back over and put my cinnamon buns in the oven. Just remember 350 degrees, we're gonna put them in there for 25 minutes. Oh yeah, that, that's smelling amazing. Mm -hmm. We need smell of vision You know, I've, I've been saying this for seven years now. I know this is our first year with the, at the cottage, but we need to get smell, smell of vision What I, do you think? I think you'd be able to retire. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yep. So good and hot. Yep. All right. Now I'm going to add in my egg. Okay. Uh, so 12 eggs um, to that. I'm going to add some fresh ground pepper, some salt. Yep. I'm going to give it a little bit of a, a stir. It's always nice to, to, to whisk your eggs with a fork. There's something about that that just, it, it's, it's fun. I don't know what it is. It's, yeah. it's old school. Yeah, right? You're right. <laughs> it's old it's school. All right. So instead of just dumping it right into the yep. center, I like to kind of go around the yep. outside. Get your heat down. Exactly. You don't want to burn the egg. I can take that for you. Thank you. Okay. It's going to start basically cooking um, instantly. Um, again, the, the best thing for this is to have a really good non-stick pan mm -hmm. uh, so it does not stick to the pan. So you can get it out. Exactly. Right? Exactly. Okay. So, so this now is going to go into the oven and oh geez there's Look one already that. made <laughs> <laughs> just be careful that's really hot okay I'll put that there for you all right i'm going to turn this off okay so there you go we have one already done and as you can see it's yeah. loose in the pan it hasn't it hasn't stuck to the bottom exactly. of the pan, which is very nice. Now we finished it with some nice old cheddar. Um, you could use anything you want. You could use some smoked gouda. Right. Uh, some smoked cheese would be great on that. Anything yep. you want. And again, you said mentioned about the meat. This one we did put some chorizo in. Yep. Um, that one was more of a vegetarian type option. Perfect. And then don't forget that you can also serve this cold. So you know, for lunch or whatever you want, a quick snack after you've been water seeing. Yeah. Put that cold. Amazing. Yeah. With a salad. Nice yep. vinaigrette. Yeah. Perfect. For sure. Hey, when we come back, we're going to see the cinnamon buns and we're going to make some home fries and some amazing eggs benedict. Welcome back. We have our cinnamon buns in the oven. We have our frittata in the oven. Yep. Well, actually, we brought it out, but we have yeah. one. <laughs> and now, there's nothing like great home fries. Well, there's nothing like great home fries anytime, exactly, right? Exactly. So, um, years ago on McLean's Magazine, 
and then Peter Zotsky, for those of you who are in my vintage and your vintage, mm -hmm, will mm -hmm. remember this talk show, Peter Zotsky on CBC. And Peter had a true appreciation for great food. So this recipe for home fries is from Peter Zotsky, okay? okay? All right. So you're at the cottage and you know, you might not always have the, um, you know, potatoes, you know, ready and that type thing. Right. So you know what you want to do? You want to go to your local grocery store, and I know it's gonna, you're going to die when I, when I say this, okay? That a chef is actually saying this. You're going to go to your local grocery store, and you're going to find some tinned potatoes. So these were canned potatoes, mm -hmm. sliced canned potatoes. They make the best home fries. Now, I know, in a pinch, they make the <laughs> best a, home oh, fries. Oh, for sure, Because sure. you're looking at me like, really, That's chef? Okay. That's okay. That's <laughs> Can okay. you throw this clarified butter for sure. in there for me? So we're going to put about two tablespoons of clarified butter in a pan. Um, we have a seasoned cast iron here, and then I'm just going to quickly dice up the onions. Now, this does not have to be anything fancy at all. It can be nice and just a nice quick dice. We're going to get our pan, melt our butter. Sorry. I'm driving your car here, brother. It's okay. So we're going to melt our butter because when you want to fry something, you want the pan to be nice and hot because what happens a lot of times, people put the pan on, then they put the onions in. You're actually steaming the onions, you're not frying them. And when you fry them, it brings the sugars right out of the onions, sweetens everything up, makes it taste that yeah, much better. Much better flavor, mm -hmm. for sure. So we're gonna add in our onions. And you wanna hear that sizzle? We're gonna have with a little bit of salt and pepper. And here, if you want, you can add some little bit of chipotle pepper if you wanna do something a little bit different. Yeah. Um, you can add some paprika to it. So then we're going to saute off our onions for just a minute. And then uh, we can go from there. Now, if you want, you tell me your Sunday morning story of how you do your potatoes. Oh, I, I get up, uh, I get up early. Mm -hmm. I go to the kitchen. I wash my potatoes. Yeah. Um, I boil my potatoes, uh, cut them, I cut them and then boil them put them on a tray, stick them outside to cool, <laughs> and then I make my home fries in yep. the morning. Yeah. Yep. So. so either way, you know, in a pinch, and not in a pinch, yeah. but if you're in a hurry, you don't want to spend a lot yeah. of time on this, this is a great yeah. way of doing it. Oh yeah. And yeah, like yeah. I said, you might have indulged the night before. <laughs> I've been at this, this would be I, easier than getting exactly. up early. I've been in the at morning. this cottage before, and <laughs> <laughs> some amaroni comes out. <laughs> so we're going to put in our potatoes. Now this is just two cans of potatoes. Um, we just literally drained the water off. We didn't put them under, rinse them, or anything like that. And now we're going to let them go for five to seven minutes, thereabouts, um, so that they start frying up. And okay, you can go as longer as you want. The, the crispier it gets, mm -hmm. and that's what we're looking for. Mm -hmm. So put this behind, and there you go. Um, I'm just going to show the folks just how easy this bread for the cinnamon dough, for the dough, as we were mentioning earlier. Right. This is like less than a half an hour, and you can just start seeing how it's starting to rise up really nicely, mm -hmm. and then we'll punch it down and go from there. But I just want to show that. So while you're doing that, okay. I'm going to make a hollandaise sauce. Okay. And New every school or old school? This is new, new school. school. <laughs> <laughs> I don't do anything old school anymore, brother. So I'm uh, going to grab my little kitchen food processor here. So we're going to get this together. Kay. Now, what I'm going to do here is um, grab some eggs. And this is, everybody gets really scared, you know, and okay, backtrack just a little bit in the story that we're going to talk to you about is both of us have done the clarified butter thing for our chefs years right, and years right, ago right, where right, we yeah. do like 45 pounds, has 45 packages of butter and you'd clarify it and God help you <laughs> if you burnt that or ruined it, you know, and the food costs and everything would go oh, through the yeah, roof. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. You yeah. know, so this is a really simple way of doing it. I have some clarified butter, and you can buy this clarified butter at any grocery store now. It's called Ghee, G-H-E-E. -E. And what it is, is they do it for you. A lot of Indian um, recipes yeah. call for Ghee, and they'll clarify it for you. So this is what's left. It's um, all, the, all the butter, oil, but no milk solids. So right. higher, higher burning point is what exactly. we did put in with yeah. our uh, potatoes there. Yeah. And so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take two egg yolks and we're just going to split them. Now I like using my fingers when I do this. 
But if you're kind of squirmish and you don't want to do it, you can just use your eggshells just to break them like so. And just kind of go back and forth, back and forth. And then your egg goes in. Get rid of that. Wash our hands. Now, again, you know, Chef and I have been talking a lot off air. And, and you're telling me there's this great book out, um, kind of like... Oh. Almost like a scientist, really? Uh, it's called The Science and Lore of the Kitchen. Mm -hmm. Not exactly too sure of the author, but it was a book that I read a number of years back and it breaks down the, the science behind the, the foods mm -hmm. um, and how they react with uh, when heat is applied, um, how they react uh, when an acid is applied. Um, talks about emulsification, mm -hmm. talks about all different kinds of things. It's a great book. If, if cooking is something that you're into, um, and as I say to my students, understanding how food works, what happens when you add that heat, mm -hmm. what happens when you add that, that acidity, um, is going to make you a, a better cook in the no, long run. Agreed, agreed. So we're going to take our hand blender. We're just going to puree this in. And then what we're going to do is take our clarified butter and we're just going to add our clarified butter in. Now, the years ago when you're making hollandaise sauce, you'd have it over oh, the stove yeah, and bath, sometimes yeah, yeah. it would get too hot and it'd separate and then you'd have to <laughs> add more egg yolk yeah. to it. And yeah, it's just a mess. So this yeah. is simple and easy. Again, the lemon egg yolk and then we're going to put in our butter. And literally in 30 seconds, you have a beautiful sauce. You know how much time that would have saved me about 30 years ago? <laughs> <laughs> you know how much time I agreed. So then you just keep it aside. Clean this up. Now. While you're doing your home fries, and you can see that it's, it's again, you're getting those great, okay. The little sticky bits right. on the bottom. And I love sticky bits because yeah. it's such a great chef term, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to check on our cinnamon buns. And they're just starting to do... Oh, those look beautiful. Yeah, we're still about uh, three or four minutes away. You just want to brown it up nicer. And just, as you can just, that's, you just test it with your fingers and away you go. Maybe I should check that. Uh, the frittata is oh, it's almost okay, done. Okay, good. So, to make your poached eggs, this is again where the science yeah, comes in. Yeah. We have some boiling water and you want the water to be a gentle boil. You want it to have a little bit of rippling going on because if you don't, when you put the egg in, it cools it down too quickly and then it makes your soft boiled egg really hard to get out and mm -hmm, not mm -hmm. friendly at all so we have our water it's coming up to a nice gentle boil here again you don't want a rapid boil because then it'll cook too right, soon right right that just like nice gentle um and you added some vinegar some vinegar and that's going to help co coag coagulate co thank you yeah. <laughs> yeah. your egg white and make it nice yeah. and firm it's going to help it's going to help bring your it's going to help bring the egg together if you don't add your acid to the water when you crack the egg in, it'll basically look, the white will look like a wispy cloud just floating around in nowhere land. Um, but that vinegar helps keep it together for sure. Perfect. Mm -hmm. Okay, so your home fries are getting ready. Yes. We have our eggs to poach. Okay. We have the vinegar in the water. Right. You know, we've uh, talked a little bit about, you know, stirring the water and putting it in the middle. Mm -hmm. But, you know, because I am new school, where did I just put them? <laughs> Right here. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we have some that we're going to put in and we're going to try and see how these all turn out. Okay. You're going to do old school. I'm going to do, I'm gonna do old school. So I had a, a bowl. Okay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh brother this is oh wow this is gonna be cool okay 
so one thing that I was talking about earlier um, is that I swirl the water mm -hmm. around. So take your egg, crack it into your bowl, and then, well, we really can't swirl it now because your two yeah. are in there, but spin your water around um, and then drop your egg kind of into that center, into that vortex, and that'll help uh, keep the egg from sitting on the bottom and actually sticking. Yeah, because there's nothing worse than trying to take it out and then you can't get it out. And right, it's right. It's horrible. So even after I put it in, if I don't spin it, so right now all I'm doing is I'm just trying to lift it off the mm -hmm. bottom of the pan and, uh, and move it around a little so again it's not sticking to the bottom of the pan. Okay, so we're getting ready to, to get to the table. Okay. Um, we have our plates here. You have your home fries. We have yes. our beautiful hollandaise sauce made the new school way. Okay. <laughs> and then we also have our cinnamon buns. So I'll grab those out. Put those down in front. See how easy they come out? And you just turn it over. And it's got all that butter oh, look at that. and the cinnamon. Mm -hmm. And it's not cooperating. <laughs> <laughs> if you want to put some home fries on there. I know a lot of people sometimes use English muffins. We're just going to use this potato scallion bun that we had left over. Right. And then to dress this up a little bit, one of our great sponsors is Pillars. And we got some of their charcuterie Westphalian ham, which is smoked prosciutto. Right? Beautiful. Everybody puts, you know, back bacon on in there. Right. But let's right. take it up another notch or two, right? Yeah. So we're going to put our smoked prosciutto on here. You got to try that. Just try that. How good is that? Mm. Mm. Right? Do you want to cut Delicious. a little bit of our frittata out? Okay. Our eggs are almost done over there. Yours is cooking quicker than mine in the new school way of, of doing things, just so you know, okay? <laughs> it's not sticking at all. Okay. Oh yeah, baby. Steve's beautiful, old school way of doing it. Look at that. That is a perfect poached egg right there. Take a little bit of uh, our hollandaise sauce over top of that. This is the morning after breakfast. <laughs> it truly is. <laughs> this is where the music plays. <laughs> <laughs> One thing we should, we should talk about too is that when you're adding your vinegar to the water, don't add too much vinegar. No, no. Or else you'll have a really uh, tough poached egg. And of course, it'll take on that flavor of the of vinegar, vinegar too. So be very careful of how much vinegar you're putting in. You really don't need a lot of vinegar. Chef, Thank it's always a pleasure much. having you on the show. Oh. It's great to be at the cottage. It's a great time. Hey, Thank till you. next time, we have more of these great recipes and you never know which cottage will show up. We may even show up at yours. I'm Chef D. You never know where I'll be. Uh.